Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Wasn't here yesterday. I was out camping, but here we're back. Now, the schedule for coffee over the next several days is going to be kind of on again, off again. So the next time that we have coffee is going to be Monday, I think. Yes, Monday next week. No coffee on Saturday or Sunday this week. But between now and then, we have so many things. And not just because there's lots of stuff on the schedule, but we have, frankly, tomorrow, Midsummer Eve, because it's St. John Eve. And then this year, it's not St. John on Friday, but Sacred Heart. So it got that piled in there too. But, and this is really like the end of the Easter cycle for real this time. We've, we've passed Trinity Sunday, we've passed Corpus Christi, Sacred Heart, and then, well, actually kind of, you know, then we do the Immaculate Heart a little bit on Saturday. <clears throat> but at, at that point, it's like going on from, from Sacred Heart to just to the Immaculate Heart. And now, now it's really done. Maybe. But, you know, it, it goes on and on. Still, it is a, a wonderful, wonderful time and a lot of good things. This is June, after all, the month of the Sacred Heart. It is also, you know, June, the month of, you know, the summer starting. It's, it's a thing. Enjoy it all. Anyway, as we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. For the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Great. Good times. Like I said, a lot of things are going on right now. And, you know, it's good. It's all good. So the World Meeting of Families, let's talk about that for a second. World Meeting of Families, this is like the 10th World Meeting of Families. It's kind of like World Youth Day, where it happens every so often in a place. And it's different from World Youth Day because obviously it's of families and the various shapes and sizes and configurations that takes. But um, versus, you know, just young people in general, kind of a broader idea. Uh, but it's also kind of more concentrated in the sense that there are more particular conferences and talks and so on. And this year it's being done in parishes. And we're doing it. We're doing a little, a little something. It's not that much, really. It's we're doing an hour of adoration today. The summit is tomorrow. Father Heasley is here. I've been talking to him. It is going to be wonderful really a tremendously interesting summit. Please come, please bring all your friends. Then Friday, we have the actual classes, the conference part of it. You have to sign up for that, see the website for info, et cetera. Then on Saturday, we're doing the prayer service that goes along with that picture of St. Joseph that the Knights have brought to the church for this month. So the Knights have a couple things. <laughs> It's funny, they kind of move around the country, kind of the, this pilgrim thing going on. One of them is like a silver rose. One of them is this picture this year uh, of St. Joseph, which was in the church for last weekend, which also was Corpus Christi, which also was Father's Day, which is the reason why it was there, leading into the world beating of families. So we have all, you know, this kind of like family idea going on now several days. And there'll be a simply a litany of St. Joseph to be prayed together. And that will be that. Very, very simple. And here we are. A couple. So it looks like a lot of things on the schedule, but it's very small things. Cool, which is great. 
And in the meantime, I, uh, the reason why there's no coffee on Saturday or Sunday, this is one of those very, very, very rare weekends when a St. Mary's parishioner is getting married elsewhere and I can go because Father Heasley will be here and we still have two priests and I don't have to be here. So I'm gonna go to Idaho Falls to marry some friends. That's it, that's what's, that's what's going on. That's kind of the big picture. All right, Whew. all those things being said, today is the perfect saint to talk about all of these things, to frame them. St. Paulinus of Nola, who is famous for a bunch of things, but not nearly famous enough for the best thing. Let's dig in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. The high priest Hilakai informed the scribe Shaphan, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. Hilakai gave the book to Shaphan, who read it. Then the scribe Shaphan went to the king and reported, your servants have smelt, smelted down the metals available in the temple and have consigned them to the master workmen in the temple of the Lord. The scribe Shaphan also informed the king that the priest Hilakai had given him a book and then read it aloud to the king. When the king heard the contents of the book of the law, he tore his garments and issued this command to Hilakai the priest. Ahikam, king of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Micaiah, the scribe Shaphan, and the king's servant Asiah. Go, consult the Lord for me, for the people, for all Judah, about the stipulations of this book that has been found. For the anger of the Lord has been set furiously ablaze against us, because our fathers did not obey the stipulations of this book, nor fulfill the written obligations. Then, the king then had all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem summoned together before him. The king went up to the temple of the Lord with all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, priests, prophets, and all the people, small and great. He had the entire contents of the book of the covenant that had been found in the temple of the Lord read out to them. Standing by the column, the king made a covenant before the Lord that they would follow him and observe his ordinances, statutes, and decrees with their whole hearts and souls, thus reviving the terms of the covenant, which were written in this book. And all the people stood as participants in the covenant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial, teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Teach me the ways of your decrees, O Lord. Instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes, that I may exactly observe them. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Give me discernment, that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Lead me in the path of your commands, for in it I delight. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Incline my heart to your decrees and not to gain. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Turn away my eyes from seeing what is vain. By your way, give me life. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Behold, I long for your precepts and your justice. Give me life. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but underneath are ravenous wolves. By their fruits, you will know them. 
Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Just so every good tree bears good fruit and a rotten tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a rotten tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So by their fruits, you will know them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Like I said before, today is the feast day of St. Paulinus of Nola, who is uh, very famous for a bunch of things, <laughs> but not famous enough to be like a household name. St. Paulinus, who is that? He uh, has this legendary work of charity. One of these really remarkable moments is a young man who is imprisoned or rather captive by pirates. And he ransoms himself. He goes in, in, in the young man's place to be the one who's captive for the pirates. Eventually, the ransom is paid. He's go, he goes back to Nola, which is not New Orleans, but a different place in Italy, southern Italy. And uh, there he dies a holy death. Very good. And also other things like that. He was very well positioned politically before he was a Christian or a priest or even a bishop, but gave that up for the ministry and so on. Those are kind of like the things that he is known for, but the important part, the one that I like, is that he was good friends with a lot of good people. So he was the one who was right in the middle of Augustine and Jerome and a bunch of other writers in the day. And he wrote himself, he was also a very good writer, <clears throat> but it was because of essentially his workshop of some monks really, that those writings which were being kind of crossing the ancient world from one side to the other, kind of going through him, copies were made and distributed. He was the one making sure, he was the one kind of um, coordinating the, the conversation that was going on academically, intellectually. He was the one also making sure that people would know about it. And it's through him, through those copies and so on that we have that. And this is pretty tremendous stuff. It's a very different kind of part of the world. If anything, it was the social media of his time. He was, he was the Facebook. Everything kind of came there, was aggregated and went out from there. That's what he did. And he did it not just because like, oh, it's a job, whatever. He did it out of friendship. He did it out of love. And even though his friends were very, very far away, kind of all around the ancient world, in very many different places, he was kind of like the hub of many spokes of one wheel. That is to say that all of these were then talking to each other through him. And there was an exchange of ideas, which was really tremendous. I'm talking about the fourth century, obviously, Augustine, Jerome, and others. And it's excellent. Now, it's kind of a truism. We know this. It's not a very interesting thing to say, but tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. This is, you know, Cicero, Marcus Aurelius, all kinds of ancient philosophers who aren't particularly important as philosophers, much better as rhetoricians. And uh, it's true, though. <laughs> It's, it's always true. And this is the reason why also, frankly, in this gospel, which says more or less the same thing, the Lord is saying another truism. A good tree bears good fruit. A bad tree cannot bear good fruit. It's very, very similar. The kind of by the fruits, you will know them. There are lots of different kinds of ways of reading that statement. One easy one is by who are the friends? Good friends have a very important function in our lives. They help us be better people. Good friends challenge us. Good friends help us develop good virtues. And along the way of making those habits happen, hopefully are there with us. Because habits don't just like happen overnight after all. They take a long time to develop. Friendship is a means by which that happens very well. I'm just kind of repeating Aristotle off the page at this point. 
there's lots of good information about friendship out there. It's obviously an important subject in philosophy and for good reason, because this is the social life that we live. St. Paulinus was a very social saint. He wasn't hosting parties. He wasn't you know, gathering people there with him, but he definitely was the place where all their thoughts came together and shared them. St. Paulinus is a great patron for those of us who like to have lots of friends, even if they are very far away, who can gather them all together, even if not in person. And yeah, it is absolutely true. By the fruits, you will know them. With good friendship, the fruit of it is a lot of goodness that someone may have very good character, hopefully, because they're being built up constantly and encouraged. One of the great things that friendship can do is encourage, sometimes correct too, in an encouraging way. Again, good friendship. Having friends is always important to cultivate. And this is the reason why it is so critical always to seek good friendships and to keep them, even if you know very dispersed. And that's it, that's, that's all I wanted to say. Very, very simple, nothing complicated. All right, but this is also the kind of the message of St. Paulinus. There are other things too. St. Paulinus, Paulinus was really just fantastic, but uh, this is it though. All right, as we always do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar and for all bishops, that they may always be humble, patient, pure, and wholly obedient to your will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that through her, your sacred heart, we may share your blessings with all whom we meet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we may find the means to jointly promote life, peace, and respect for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that there be peace among all nations, especially in Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For whom or what else shall we pray? For the intercession of St. Monica for all our friends and families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made the Bishop St. Paulinus of Nola outstanding for love of poverty and for pastoral care, Graciously grant that, as we celebrate his merits, we may imitate the example of his charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Sorry, going fast today, which is the way it is. <laughs> Lots of things these next few days. Tomorrow is Midsummer Eve. That's what it's called because the next day is St. John the Baptist Day, except this year it's Sacred Heart, Immaculate Heart, all kinds of things, lots of things, lots of things to enjoy. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. 
be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Fantastic. All right, everyone, have a lovely week. We'll see you again on Monday. All right, God bless you all. Bye-bye.